Hey guys, what is going on? Um, long time no see. I'm sure you guys are probably used to it at this point. To you new guys though, um, I have some new subscribers. I had kind of a little bump there recently due to uh, Robbie Webster. He got um, quite a few new subscribers and did a little shout out. He mentioned me in that. Thank you, sir. Great guy. I really enjoy all his videos. Has lots of stuff in his collection has a lot of great taste in movies as well. And so um, I'm glad to be friends with him, he's a good guy. Just to let you know if you're new to my channel though, my channel is somewhat sporadic from time to time, so I will not be filling your, uh, your feed with videos every day. I apologize if that's what you hoped for. But what I can say is for the short term, my channel has been really kind of rough on me keeping up because I am actually working without a camera right now. I had a flip for three and a half years. It has finally almost quit, which is bad because I really enjoy taking it places like conventions and stuff and showing cool stuff like that. But in the short term, I'm having to use an iPad to shoot video and my computer is actually also messed up. so. This is a little odd. If you notice me looking two different directions, it's very weird when you're videoing with an iPad just because the camera's on opposite directions from where it looks like I'm at. But first of all, before we jump into the update, I'd like to open some mail. Um, so this is a unboxing slash uh, update to my collection. So hold on for just a second. Okay, now that I've got my knife here, we'll go ahead and start with the unboxing. This first one I've got here is in a kind of a flat rate box here. The guy that this came from is Mr. Blueberry1981. I'll put the link right here. You can go directly to the link in the description. I will have it there as well. Very loyal viewer, a cool guy, and I hate that I've made him wait this long to unbox this. Here's the stuff here. Read the, the letter first. It says, hey Clinton, finally, almost after a month, you are receiving the laser disc of, and I'll show it here, Gremlins. Awesome. One of my all-time favorite movies. I covered up a section of that because there's a surprise. I apologize again for the delay. Hey, no problem. I apologize for the delay that, you know, this takes to get this to the internet because I've been holding on this about as long as you had said that. After looking at the disc, I did notice a minor crack on one side. Not a big deal because you know why? You're going to find out why. On positive note, side two looks okay. I hope it plays well for you. I purchased it at Half Price Books, which is not supposed to purchase items that are unusable, so I hope you are able to view it without any complications. I would have checked the disc before I purchased it. Lesson learned on my end for the next time. Either way, I hope it's a nice addition to your collection. Please let me know if it plays okay for you. I don't think we'll ever know if this is the... Right there, you can see it. It says to Frank. No big deal, because, you know, this is <laughs> not Frank, but... Uh, it says, Joe Dante, whoever had this got this uh, signed by the director, Joe Dante, which to me is an awesome idea. I mean, that actually makes this so much cooler because I've got this movie on uh, Blu-ray, so it's no big deal. But to have a laser disc that's signed is really, really cool. This doesn't have the, um, you know, like the flip out or anything like that, so that was probably the best place to get a signature. And it looks like it could be it. I mean... What's hilarious is it says to Frank, Joe Dante, then it says plus Gizmo, and it has like a little print there, like he tried to do a little foot. I don't know if Joe Dante did that or not, but I think it's amazing that, that that just somehow made it through the internet to me. And this is what he mentioned. He said it looks like there's a crack, and you can, you'll probably pick it up a little bit right there. And there is a crack. Not a big deal. I mean, I can get another uh, laser disc of Gremlins. But I cannot necessarily get another Joe Dante signature. I don't think we'll ever know if the Joe Dante signature is real, but after doing a search for it online, it appears to match pretty close. I would guess that that's probably real. I mean, for what it's worth, it would be almost not worth it to try to fake something like that. Uh, thanks again for all your videos. I look forward to seeing more on your channel. Uh, that says, Happy Viewing Brad, Mr. Blueberry1981. Thank you, sir. This is awesome. Nice addition to the collection. I'm really looking forward to uh, dropping that in there to my uh, big Laserdisc collection. So that's cool. I actually have some Laserdiscs in this update coming up, so that'll be a nice addition to those. Also have another package here from another friend of mine. You can see how it says, uh, Fragile. 
It also says winter is coming. Winter is coming. I wonder if you could guess what this is. But that was written by somebody that sent me this. The name of that viewer, I'll put it right here. It's Platypus Dream. It's a good friend of mine, my cousin. Also, uh, just a cool guy, a good friend. He sent me just a black case. And it says here, we got a note. It says, sorry this took a spell to get to you. That's okay, all this stuff is waiting. <laughs> waiting and you guys are waiting on me, that's, that's no big deal. Got kind of distracted a bit with this new game, Ingress. Uh, I was also looking for something to add to the package, but nothing jumped out as such. Hope this makes it to you safely. Enjoy, Jason. And that's like this dream. And what he sent to me, is the Game of Thrones episodes I didn't have. Wink. Okay. So without showing any more of that, I will put that back in package and I'll say thank you very much, sir. I will really enjoy that. Um, I had all those episodes on a DVR that died. And so it's nice to be able to watch those again. Mini clap. Okay. Thank you, sir, and I will now move on to the update. I'm sure it's the part everybody's dying to see. If you guys are new, you're probably wondering what I bought over the last three months and uh, what a typical update would be on this channel. I don't know how typical this is, but this is a very um, eclectic <laughs> selection of things to add to my collection. I'll start with my DVDs. They're pretty basic. I'll go to Blu-rays that are pretty popular, and then I'll end with Laserdisc and VHS. So if you guys want to see some of those analog legacy formats, just hold out towards the end. Okay, as far as DVDs go, I'll show these really quick. I got these three at Big Lots. I got the new Hellraiser. I still haven't seen this. I hear nothing but bad things, but three bucks. I thought it was time I could just at least give it a shot. Um, I got this, the Superman. It's called The Amazing Story of Superman which uh, with the new movie that came out, Man of Steel, I've been thinking about this a lot. This was a movie that came out kind of like a documentary, but it was released around the time that they did Superman Returns. Um, and I haven't seen it since then. I thought it'd be really cool. I think I watched it on Netflix about 2006, 2007. Uh, and also picked up Buried Alive. Not expecting much out of this, but it, the main creature lady thing looks kind of creepy and I thought, ah, for three bucks I'm going to give it a shot. So those are just some easy little big lots pickups. Also finally got the second season of Young Justice. I'm a big fan of the show. Um, I'm kind of sad that it's not around anymore. But I really enjoyed it. Um, I thought it built up really well. And if you're a fan of things like Justice League that went away several years ago, it's about the closest thing to something like that that we've had in a little while. Uh, another thing I was kind of disappointed that went away, and I finally picked it up after all the years of putting it off, because this has been out, at least the first season's been out, uh, at least a year or two, and that is Avengers, um, Earth's Mightiest Heroes Avengers. Um, I picked these up at Toys R Us, which were fairly cheap. Uh, they were as cheap as they were at Amazon. I think they were around 10 or 12 bucks. But the main thing was I picked up there so I could make sure I got the slip covers on each of these. Which, um, you know, I mean, if you get the option, you might as well. These are all really cool. I've seen this before, but I wanted to get it on DVD because I really enjoy it. I really like the Avengers TV show. And then here was the second season, the final season, season two. They did more discs on these. So two of these made up as much of a season as four of the old ones. But these both came with slipcovers as well. Haven't watched all of the very end of season two. But I'm building up to that. I decided to rewatch season one first and then get to season two. But I really enjoyed this show as well. Uh, I think it's very well done. Uh, not as typical as most kids type shows would be like that. It has a good arching uh, story arc. Arching story arc. It has a good story arc that builds from little things that you see in earlier episodes. You have to really pay attention. You know, it's not like one of those things which is like a commercial pace. So that was the only DVDs I got over the last few months. Uh, as far as Blu-rays go, I got a lot of horror movies this time. Not for sure why, but uh, Dark Skies. Really, really enjoyed Dark Skies. I think it's a very unused uh, genre, and that is the, the semi-realistic alien uh, horror thriller science fiction. 
Uh, I really enjoy this kind of stuff. Movies like Communion, Fire in the Sky, um, just things along those lines. There isn't a whole lot out there that seems semi-realistic, and this pushes it a little bit farther into the horror genre. But still, I really enjoyed Dark Skies. I know a lot of people didn't like it, but I liked it okay. Uh, Mama, I actually thought this was pretty good. It wasn't nearly as creepy as I thought it was going to be based on the previews and everything leading up to this. But I still liked it. It was fun. We watched it, you know, my girlfriend and I, some of her family, and even some of the kids watched it, surprisingly. I, um, I didn't expect them to want to watch it, but some of them watched it and weren't that scared. But it is creepy in its own way. Uh, just not as much as I thought it was. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of elements to that that was enjoyable as well. But anytime you watch anything by Guillermo del Toro, I, I'm a big fan, so I'm just going to watch it anyway. I picked up From Beyond when they were doing these. Uh, this is a movie I had on DVD, and then I re-picked it up on Blu-ray. You guys are probably familiar with this. It's very odd, and it's kind of like loosely based on H.P. Lovecraft stuff. And if you're really kind of familiar with like Reanimator and other things like that, um, I can't imagine that you haven't stumbled across this yet, but it's kind of an 80s cult classic, and it's got a lot of the same elements that some of the similar movies around that time would have been like, but it's just kind of been forgotten since then, so I'm glad that Screen Factory re-released this. Uh, the next one I've got here is another Screen Factory release, which is Phantasm 2, which is personally my favorite Phantasm, which I... I kind of feel like I, I get a lot of crap for that because a lot of people like Phantasm 1 or whatever, but I, I like all the Phantasms, but Phantasm 2 is my favorite, and it just always has been. I like the part where they gear up and they get the car and they put everything in the trunk, and it just has that feel, you know, like like an action movie sort of, and it's just really like intense. I like when the people fighting monsters or the evil part of like a horror movie are actually prepared, you know, and so even if it didn't always work out, it, it's just kind of cool to see that. Uh, the Collection, if you're familiar with The Collector, this is the sequel directly after that, and um, I liked it okay. I like The Collector as well, so I have nothing negative to say about The Collection. Um, I was really excited going in, so I probably had overly hyped expectations, but after seeing it, it wasn't quite as good as I thought it was going to be, but I actually really enjoyed it, so no complaints you know, to speak of. Uh, the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre, this one's in 3D. If you're a fan of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like a true fan of the original, this kind of seems unnecessary. Um, I don't know why they keep feeling the need to reboot and update the story. And this kind of takes place before um, everything that happened in the old one. And I understand that fits in there, you know, in a cool way. But at the same time, um, I didn't really get into this as much as I'd hoped, but it's just all right. I would say that's probably more of a rental unless you've already seen it and you know you really like it. Uh, a Good Day to Die Hard. I actually uh, thought this was a pretty good movie as long as you don't have that preconceived Die Hard notion. If you're a big fan of Die Hard 1, Die Hard 2, it's finally got to the point where it's deviated so much from that formula that Bruce Willis is no longer that regular cop, which that's broke away from that formula of the last couple of movies. But this is actually, if you just look at it as a straight action movie, you're going to enjoy it okay. Uh, just don't go in with that preconceived Die Hard notion because uh, if you're a humongous fan of Die Hard 1 or Die Hard 2, you know, or both or whatever, you're not going to really see the relevance of this still being a Die Hard movie when everything that happens is so crazy. and It's, it's so international now and the stuff that happens seems like it's it's a little inconceivable that it would have happened to the same guy over and over again, but that's okay. You know what I mean? It's, you just gotta suspend your disbelief. Uh, Oz, Great and Powerful, I really enjoyed this a lot more than I expected. In fact, I didn't really think that I was gonna enjoy this movie at all. I think in a weird way, I thought this is another one of those movies where it's overly CGI and it's just gonna be another movie. And I watched it and I really enjoyed the backstory to The Wizard of Oz more than I thought I was going to. But if you're a big fan of the original Wizard of Oz and you're just curious, this could actually, you know, hurt or help that notion. Uh, the next two I've got here are both uh, Blu-rays that have come out in the last few months from the DC animated movie line. Uh, this first one, Superman Unbound. I really enjoyed this uh, based on Jeff John's series that he did. Um, 
that had to do with Brainiac. This is really, really good. Um, the story is good itself, and then this is just a retelling of that for the most part. I enjoyed it a lot. I, I like all those Superman DC animated movies. Uh, this, on the other hand, is a beast. I think that if you have, uh, if you're a big fan of DC stuff and you kind of understand how their universe works and you're familiar with people's origin stories and stuff like that, this really plays with that. And it makes me want to finally read that Flashpoint. I've been really behind and I haven't actually got to that yet. I've been working on like Blackest Night and Brightest Day and stuff like that. And this is what kind of happened after that. Flashpoint is amazing. This is actually called Just League the Flashpoint Paradox. And it tells a very interesting story of how someone like the Flash and his powers could change time and then in that time change uh, alter reality. Things like can be undone completely to the point where it's a different reality. And uh, it plays with a lot of what we think of as you know, people's backstories and who is who and what is what. But yeah, just check that out if you're a fan. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna show you here is some VHS. I'll be brief on these because they're all very similar. You guys may not have very much interest on that, but I've got laser discs coming up after this. I'm a big fan of the show Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Josh Whedon in general. Uh, and I found a lot in, I mean, L-O-T, like an eBay lot, not a whole lot. Well, well, both. I found a lot of this stuff in an eBay lot. But somebody was selling what they say, uh, Emmy consideration tapes or for your consideration, um, screener tapes. Uh, this is all of these. Some of these I already had. Some of them are a viewing copy where I have a sealed copy, whatever. But I got a few new ones. This one here is Innocence. That episode is what it looks like there. Here's the slip cover. Here's the body. I have this one. I think mine is a sealed copy. But it has the slip cover inside of a slip cover, which is kind of cool. It has a lot of information written there, and then the body's in red. And uh, that looks like that. And the tape's like this. But uh, very cool. Give me consideration tape for the body. And that's a great episode from season five. This is one that I really wanted that I didn't have. Very similar setup. And it has some information about there from TV guys. Talking about TV Guide and saying this was such a great episode. This is Hush. Hush is a masterpiece of suffering and silence and one of the season's best episodes of any series. And that was from TV Guide. That's from season four, which was a notorious episode because there's like 20-something um, minutes of no talking in that episode, which works out in a very interesting way. I remember all the warnings I've been telling you. They're like, this is a very special episode. So people wouldn't freak out and say, you know, something's wrong with my TV or something like that, you know, if you caught the wrong part. But um, here's another one here. This is a men's. I'm pretty sure I've got this one already. I might look to trade that with somebody to get one that I don't have later. Uh, this is one of my cooler ones that I picked up. This is from season three, graduation day part one. And this is actually a preview tape. So I don't know if this has the final cut of the movie or a different cut. Um, some of those can go either way. And sometimes they have missing music, just odd things. But this is for graduation part one. It has a cool clamshell, lots of cool artwork. Yeah, that's very, very cool. And then I've got two episodes of Angel here. This Angel episode, I Will Remember You. Another great Joss Whedon series. Production stuff are there and co-writing. But yeah, here's another Angel for your consideration. And this one's in a very odd hard shell. I haven't seen any of these in the hard clam shell like that before. But this is really old, you know, copyright 2001. I don't know if they just kind of did whatever was handy back then. But this is from the episode Billy. And, um, has one of my favorite characters in it from the show. This is from the seasons that have Amy Acker, who played Fred. She's my favorite Angel character. Okay, that's my VHS, which for this time was only uh, consideration Emmy and, and preview tapes. Now let's get into laser discs. Uh, I bought another uh, lot of 
laser discs on eBay to get a couple of movies I really wanted and ended up getting a few that you know just came with it. But here's Village of the Damned, one of the last movies that Christopher Reeves did before his accident. And there he is there, I that. I haven't seen this in a long time, I actually haven't watched it. I just vaguely remember it. I remember renting it on VHS back in the day. And I don't think I've seen it since then. I need to watch it. Uh, the Relic, which I like okay. My girlfriend really doesn't like this movie, basically because she likes the book series that was done. And there was things that they changed about this that made her really unhappy, which, you know, I'm not a humongous fan of those authors. Like, I haven't read their stuff yet. But she's read all the series that they did with that same guy. Uh, the Seventh Sign, which is a good one if you've never seen it. It's kind of one of those uh, religious, end of the world, fictional, you know, odd movies that they used to do these every once in a while. But The Seventh Sign is... Um, it's kind of one of those movies that's sort of been forgotten. That was a big movie when it came out, though. And here is Body Parts. I always enjoyed this movie. Um, Jeff Fahey. And um, it's one that I don't hear anybody talk about anymore, where he, uh, he receives a, there's a transplant of arms and legs from a guy that was, um, I guess you could say, like, they're almost like, still evil i don't know i'll let you guys check it out but it's just an interesting concept it's been done in other movies and stuff but i just like that one because i watched it when i was in high school uh dressed to kill which is this is a classic if you brian de Palma film if you've never seen it and those were all the ones that came in that one lot and then i bought this from another guy which it's a little torn up but uh, Stone Cold with Brian Bosler. This is one I hadn't seen in forever, and I just got in the mood to watch it um, growing up here in Oklahoma. Uh, Brian Bosworth was pretty famous because he um, played football at OU before he kind of, you know, went off into the NFL and then, you know, went the other direction into acting as well. But yeah, so that's kind of what I got this time. If you guys... Of course, I'll add this to my laser desk now, too. Thank you, sir. And thank you, sir. I will let you guys go now. I should have some more videos, hopefully coming up soon, as time is allowing me to get them out there. Um, I do have a contest planned. I do have some prizes planned. I just have to get the time to make that video. And unfortunately, between the computer problems, the camera problems, and everything else that's happened in between, it's really pushed this back, and I needed to open those packages and get an update going today. So that's the reason why I still haven't done my 900 subs uh, contest. If for some reason I get close to 1,000, don't worry. I will make up for it. I will do a contest for both anyway. Okay, I'm going to get out of here. I will see you guys again next time, and don't forget to check out the people in the links, including Robbie Webster. If for some reason you guys are not subscribed to him, just do it. Just, just go subscribe to Robbie. Okay, take care.